What the? F okay. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Um, wow. I freely admit I did not expect to lose that game. Uh, that does continue with a trend for the Mavericks. We'll get into that in a moment. Uh, the Mavericks fell to the New York Knicks at home 106 to 102. This was pretty much the Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis show. And pretty much every other Maverick forgot to show up for the damn game. This was this was baffling, to be honest with you. The Mavericks bench was nowhere near as good as it normally is. It did not play like the best bench. Uh, I don't understand what Carlisle was doing with some of the minutes distribution. I, I don't think Seth Curry played more than like seven or eight minutes in the game. Didn't attempt a single shot that I saw. And yet you had Tim Hardaway Jr. get what? I think he had a couple threes in the last couple minutes, but he still wound up something like four of 16 from the field. And I mean, he was just he was just building houses for Habitat for Humanity with how many bricks he was laying down. Five of 15, including three of 10 on three and one of two at the line. Holy crap. That's supposed to be your third guy, huh? That's supposed to be your big scorer off the bench? dude dude i'm out i'm seriously out i i I've stressed all my issues with him before about not being a very efficient scorer and holy crap he has only built on it this year he has been in his best games for the mavericks serviceable if you can give me a deal around the trade deadline that jettisons him away and brings in something of value in return, I'm thrilled because, good God, that contract feels like an albatross when you're paying a guy $20 million and he's going to shoot that piss poorly for you. But I'm off in the wilderness here. I'm kicking all the dirt in Hardaway Jr.'s face. There's plenty of dirt to go around. But before I dig too much further into the bad, let's talk about some of the actual good things that happened in this game for the Mavericks. Luka Doncic Knots, I think it's his 13th, not knots, notches. I believe it's his 13th career triple double here. He set the new career high for points with 38. Fantastic. Now, he only got one assist from, I believe there was like three minutes left in the third quarter when he got the ninth, and he got that last assist in the final two minutes of the fourth quarter. His teammates just couldn't buy a basket. And the whole problem with this started from the jump pretty much. The Mavericks in the first quarter just could not could not get stops, could not finish at the rim. The Knicks at one point were shooting an absurd 11 of 18 on threes. That was late in the third quarter. And there just wasn't anything Dallas could do. Now, the Knicks couldn't make free throws to save their lives, which kind of makes you wonder, maybe you should have fouled them a little bit, uh, a little bit more often, because the Knicks in the mid-range game were solid, and in the three-point game for three quarters and three quarters plus were just absurd lights out. I can't remember who it was in the comments earlier in the pre-game show I did, somebody calling out their concern about the Knicks playing up for this game. Damn sure did, man. I you, Every now and then you're going to get humbled by a team that you don't understand how you lost. Uh, the Mavericks should have lost to Orlando earlier this week. They pretty much squandered the opportunity and caught a couple breaks in the final minute. Two turnovers by the Magic on offensive fouls, and then obviously the missed three-pointer at the buzzer that would have won it. Uh, so that's one item there. But then this game, yeah, they, they just messed around too much in the first quarter. They went ice cold. They couldn't make anything. They were missing shots at the rim. I don't know what's happened with Jalen Brunson, but he's... He doesn't look he hasn't looked like himself this year and he looked somewhat scared out there I thought at times this game. But Porzingis for what it's worth, you know, I talked about Luka and his his uh legit night 38 14 and 10. Kristaps Porzingis he got up for this game and I figured he would. He shot 50% from the field, 28 points, 9 rebounds, 11 of 22 from the field, 4 of 8 from 3. Two of three at the line and five blocks. What's more, yes, he, he only had one turnover on the game. So pretty much in every way you would want 
Porzingis to respond. He did. Like, he was making big plays. Now, he did pick up a, a terrible foul on a three-pointer by Smart, or not Smart, uh, Marcus Morris there in the uh, waning minutes. That fouled him out of the game. That sucked. But for the most part, I thought KP did really well. The Dallas offense just completely lost flow. I don't understand a lot of the lineups Carlisle was going with, as I talked about earlier, Tim Hardaway Jr., was given just unlimited leash, whereas Curry seemed like he had nothing at all. Now, Curry played 13 minutes. He did have a steal. No shot attempts of any kind. And yet, you had Tim Hardaway Jr. get 24 minutes. And again, 5 of 15. It, it was it was baffling in this game. Like, even of the Maverick starters, outside of Luka and Porzingis, Luka was 13 of 26, so 50%. Only 3 of 11 on threes. That That's... And that last three he took, to be honest with you, he tried to step back with his heel on the logo. Dude, there were 17 seconds left in the game, and you were down three points at the time. There was no reason to take that shot. Now, Dallas didn't have a timeout, I don't believe. But even still, surely, surely, even with your great range and clutch gene, we can find a better shot than that. He damn near made it. But it doesn't matter because it's like, all right, now we foul them. They split at the line one of two again, and that's that's the game. Like, I, I didn't like the possession at all. Uh, Lucas 3 of 11 on threes, that kind of sucked. But other than that, he was phenomenal again. His teammates let him down. Uh, Powell, good God, I thought Powell was dreadful in this game. 27 minutes, 1.5 rebounds. 0 of 1 from the field, 1 of 2 at the line. How... Do you play 27 minutes and attempt one shot? Dorian Finney-Smith, you know, he's not going to get a lot of shots in the game, but at least he attempted four shots in the game, one of four on threes, three points, three rebounds, one assist. Courtney Lee started again for reasons unknown. Again, played five minutes, two points. Courtney Lee things. Uh, Maxi, he did all right. He was eight points, five rebounds. Had a steal, played 29 minutes. Like, he was there. DeLon Wright disappeared completely, 26, 26 minutes, 2 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists. Uh, had a block, but not, not a lot going on there. It just was a lot of nothing. And I mentioned Brunson earlier, 16 minutes, 3 points, 3 rebounds, 4 assists. And Brunson, Jackson also played, and he didn't get a whole lot done either. He actually had a poor outing. But his minutes mostly came early on. The, the Mavericks just lost rhythm at times. If it wasn't Luka or KP just bailing out the team by just playing out of their minds, then the team looked like it had no rhythm, and it really reared its egg. Now, the team fell behind 11 points at one point in the, in the fourth quarter, or I think it was the late third quarter, and then they rallied back, cut it to four going into the fourth quarter, and they got all the way there. And they just kind of squandered it. In fact, they even built a little lead, and then they squandered it. And it just... We were running two-man game with freaking Dodo and DeLon Wright at one point. And it was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Please tell me what are we doing. It made no sense at all. I don't know what Seth Curry did to get in Rick Carlisle's doghouse. I mean, I know he missed the two free throws at the end of the Orlando game. That could have cost us dearly. But you would have thought he kicked Rick Carlisle's dog on the way out of the arena that night because he seemed like he was pretty firmly in the doghouse. I know he got 13 minutes, which means he should have been able to get shot attempts in that. But holy crap, man. When you're struggling that mightily and the Knicks are shooting lights out and you're having to erase a deficit like that, you need three-point shooting. The Knicks shot 50% on the game from three. 14 of 28. Mavericks shot 32% at 14 of 44. You needed three-point shooting. You needed a 44% three-point shooter in the game for you. Dallas didn't do that. They didn't play much Curry. Instead, we put Tim Hardaway Jr. in his mediocre, you know, percentage-wise three-point shooting out there and just gave him a license to fire away. Didn't matter. Didn't matter how many he missed. I mean, you even heard him. He, he was out of his own funk. You even heard him missing threes and getting picked up on the hard mic screaming the F-bomb. Like, he knows he sucks right now. I get it. And it is what it is. But good God, man. When a guy's that out of his out of his uh, comfort zone and he's, like, screaming at himself and everything on defense, 
for a missed shot, another bricked three, maybe just maybe take him out of the game and rely on someone else, another guy that can shoot for you. We've got a plethora of guards. I wouldn't have mind seeing a little bit of J.J. Borea in there. I wouldn't have mind seeing some more Justin Jackson despite his rough start. It seemed like he had a slow start in the game. I think he was one of five shooting, and it seemed like Rick, Rick pretty much pulled the ripcord and was like, all right, that's enough out of you, young man. You're done. Sit on the bench. Oh, my God. We really just lost to a 1-7 team at home. So as I mentioned earlier, we've beaten Orlando at home, and we've beaten Washington at home. We've lost to the Lakers, we've wa lost to the Blazers, and we've lost to the freaking Knicks. I called the loss at home last year to the Knicks, a depleted Knicks team even then. I called that rock bottom. There was no Dennis Smith Jr. in this game. Not that the Knicks play him a whole lot for that to matter, but there was no Dennis Smith in this game. They didn't have all of their guys. The Mavericks were sitting second in the standings. Granted, it's, I know, through seven games, but they were sitting second in the Western Conference standings. They can't defend home court right now. That's what it boils down to. They cannot defend home court in, the, in their freaking schedule, and that's going to bite you in the ass. I mean, you haven't lost yet on the road, but your toughest games have come at home. This should have been an easy game. This was penciled in as an easy game. You know, I talked earlier. I want to take the, even with the Porzingis great game, I want to take it with a grain of salt because, hear me out, I am objective in my assessment, right? So last year, when we still had DeAndre Jordan, every time we played his old team, the Clippers, he balled out of his mind. I think one of those games messed around and almost got a triple-double. And he just played to an insanely high level, and he was dialed in he was fully committed to everything and we we would praise him but then as soon as he wasn't playing his old team his level of effort and his play would kind of bounce back off and i'm not going to say i'm not saying that's what's happening with porzingis or what i anticipate happening with porzingis at all at all at all so don't write into that what i am saying is you're gonna get up for your former team unless your name is tim hardaway jr in which case you're laying bricks for houses to build you know, Habitat for Humanity homes. But it is what it is. So you rolled out Porzingis. He played fantastic. A fantastic game. 28, 9, and 5 blocks. That is legit. You shot 50% from the field. I still want you to work. I want you now to work on your free throws because Luca has fixed the problem. He's in the high, or he's in the mid 80 percent at this point. He was 81 percent coming into the game. Actually, that was going into Orlando. I think he was six of seven in that game, and then he was something like nine of nine in this game. Um, not that it matters too much. I'm just curious now. Uh, nine of nine at the line, yeah. Uh, but KP is shooting in the high 60s. I think he was 68 percent, and then he made two of three in this game, so bunked down just a little bit. Uh, I want KP to work on his free throws a little bit. And I want to see him keep this up. Hey, he's still rebounding good. Great. He's now got three games on the year with five or more blocks. Great. I want to see if he can keep this momentum going, keep the touch on his shot going that he showed tonight because he looked dialed in. He looked comfortable and smooth in this game. And that went a long, long way for the Mavericks. It sucks because the Knicks, the Knicks beat you 106-102. The Knicks came into this game as the 29th rated offense with a 100.1 uh, points per 100 possessions rating. 24th in defensive rating, 110. They held you below that rating. And again, it's the bench. They lost games, two games by, three games by 20 plus points this year. Uh, let's see. Four games overall by double digit. I mean, this is... In every conceivable way, it could have been an embarrassing loss. This is an embarrassing loss. At least KP and Luka did their thing, but this feels pretty pretty empty. This is a very frustrating thing. At the end of the... Let me see here. I took... Let me take stock of the final stat breakdown here. Yeah, so with the game... Nick shot 42% from the field compared to 41% for Dallas. So that was pretty even. I'm not too upset in that regard. Again, the Knicks started really hot. Three-point shooting was ridiculous for the Knicks. Even some where they were just throwing up a prayer at the end of a shot clock. They were getting it, and they got some fortuitous bounces. That went as well. Free throws, only 58% for the Knicks, 82% for Dallas. The difference is the Knicks shot... The Knicks made more than Dallas attempted. That's the difference there. The Knicks made 18 of 31. Dallas made 14 of 17. 
you're going to be hard pressed in games like that. Although it turned into a hack a shack late. Uh, the Knicks, 12 turnovers, Dallas 13, pretty even there. Assist 19 for the Knicks, 18 for the Mavericks. We got out rebounded by the Knicks. And they doubled us up on the offensive glass, including Julius Randle getting a huge offensive rebound on a missed free throw late in that game. Uh, KP boxed him out inside, but the ball hit off the side of the rim, fired out wide. Julius Randle ripped away, got the ball, got fouled, and I think he split at the line, if I remember correctly, or maybe he missed both in that regard. It ended up not mattering, but it was a huge missed opportunity for Dallas. Dallas did get six blocks compared to three, and the fouls were pretty much even as well, but... This is a this is a hard hard pill to swallow because this is a game that was penciled in pretty much as a win. Like uh, Frank Natilakina, he he made just twenty eight point seven percent of his three point attempts last year. He was four for four on the night. Like that's you're going to be hard pressed to do something in those situations, and that's pretty much what the game boiled down to. Like the Knicks. At one point, I mentioned 11 of 18 from three and late in the third quarter. That's 61% from three. And they weren't just getting wide open looks. Like, it was pretty much what you would expect. Now, a little bit of humor it ends up not mattering because the Knicks get the win, so this guy's not going to feel too bad about this kind of laughable take. But uh, Mark Berman of the New York Post shared a tweet earlier today basically saying, that uh, Marcus Morris knows exactly how to shut down, quote, shut down Kristaps Porzingis. 28-9-5 doesn't sound like shut down, but you could also say Marcus Morris is who got him fouled out, so, yeah. It's, let's just call it hyperbolic in nature. (laughs) It's a little excessive on the assessment. Uh, pretty much here. Yeah, I, I'm looking through my notes of anything else of worth mentioning. Uh, this is this is a loss that's going to be a head scratcher for Dallas, and they're going to have to move past it because, yeah, you got Memphis coming up next, and you got another rematch with the Knicks looming pretty pretty damn soon again uh, in like two weeks at most. I don't even think it's that long actually. I think it's like literally next week so dallas is gonna have to get it together because now they're gonna have to go to new york kp's gonna get booed and booed relentlessly there and that will be presumably the dennis smith jr return game not return to dallas but revenge game potentially so it's gonna be something to watch hopefully dallas takes it a little more seriously and is a little more dialed in because other than luca and kp this was a no-show for the mavericks uh let's see here the Mavericks came into the game rating inside, like offensively speaking, rating in the top 10 in each of these categories. Offensive rating, they're second. They were second coming into this game. That's going to drop a bit after a 102. Net rating, ninth. That's going to drop a little bit. Assist to turnover ratio, seventh. Eh, that one, that one might be all right. Um, maybe narrow just a little bit. Efficiency, field goal percentage, eighth. True shooting percentage, eighth. Rebounds per game, fourth. Offensive rebounds per game, fifth. You got out-rebounded by the Knicks, and the Knicks employ nothing but power forward. So hurts to miss that one, Dallas, especially when uh, there's no there's no reason for this loss. There's no reason at all. Um, Shout-out to Luka and KP. I'm, I know I'm going in circles at this point. I'm just trying to kind of wrap my head around this one. This is, this is going to be a head-scratcher that I'm going to spend – Probably a few days trying to figure out how the hell that just happened. But not much else to say, guys. This uh, this is a tough one. Shake it off. Learn from it. And move forward because the season keeps moving. And, hey, it's in the end just one game out of 82. And we're talking about the eighth game of the year. You got plenty of time to leave this miles behind you in the rearview mirror. So that's going to do it for my time. Thank you for watching. Better days ahead. Until next time, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute. What the f-